And welcome everybody once again to Safe Place Podcast. Some flashing news that's just been found out now. It's been put all over the internet. They are literally, and we're going to go and see some live footage in a second of this. They have now tackled the problem of paedophilia. NASA Good. has sent the first paedophile into space. Let's go and take a look at that live footage now. Last month, the notorious paedophile Sidney Cook was blasted into space to spend the rest of his life aboard a one-man prison vessel, posing no further threat to children on Earth. But it was revealed that an eight-year-old boy was also placed on board by mistake and is now trapped alone in space with the monster. A spokesman said, this is the one thing we didn't want to happen. Oh, what a shame. An absolute tragedy. How the hell did the little kid get on that spaceship? Fucking stupid human beings again, isn't he? Their heart's in the right place. They're, they're so close now to working out the paedophile problem. They're going to be able to get that kid back. I don't know if they're going to get the kid back. I'm sure they're going to send someone up. I just hope that the guy they send up to get the kid back isn't a paedophile as well. Yeah. They need to make sure that they really test who's going up there. Yes, there is a statistic that says 90% of astronauts are paedophiles as well. So How is it? Where did you, what statistic? Where did you get that from? The NASA site. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <right in> <laughs> so, from the NASA that. site it I was, believe him don't you it was free S's though free S's so anyway let's get more serious now on the subject of paedophilia Craig once again you've brought some key notes in haven't you and again we use humour don't we to just relieve what we're going to talk about basically so a paedophile is somebody attracted to basically kids children now I thought paedophile was the name of somebody who'd committed a crime but it's just based on being attracted to a young person. So what's the name of somebody that is attracted to young people that hasn't offended yet? Is there a name for those people? I think this is what it means. It's a That's that's classed as okay. a paedophile, do you know what I mean? I yes. always thought paedophile was someone... That's committed hung, the crime yeah, of hung. abusing a child. So that was a new fact for me to find out. Now, there's some research out there, and we'll go, it's going to tackle two parts of this. Say 50% now have this actual brain problem, a brain sort of injury where some part of the brain isn't actually developed right I don't at go, birth. I don't give a shit if they've got a brain problem. I don't want to marry any of my kids. That's our argument that we're going to get against this, isn't it? Don't worry, because you're going to see that that's basically arguing against a sexuality trait in a human Are being. Are you saying that a paedophile has a sexual orientation? Yes. Yeah, can't argue with that. 50%, <laughs> 50% right, of the information that's coming through now is that there's part of their brain function that, and, and it's a, an interesting part of the brain, it usually gives you the ability to be protective towards children, but it's switched okay, so to it a gets, sexual desire. Okay, so children. you're protective of children. You've got this more tendency within the brain to be attracted to taking care of children and obviously what happens is if that person grows up and they become sexually active and sexuality gets involved it can start to put a filter over that what originally was a nice intention out comes the darkness through that sexuality doesn't it well it's not darkness now remember this the terminology of a normal perspective is that's darkness but if you take what's what the brain sort of scientists are saying They've got a brain injury that means that they sexually attract, uh, are attractive to young children. Now, if you think of somebody else who does this, we are attracted to women. Gay men are attracted to men. This is part of... Yes, but this is the darkness we're talking about. Is The darkness is that orientation leads to the abuse of somebody that doesn't have a say. Of course, in 50% of people, now we can talk about the other elements of the 50% that abuse in a, a, a little bit later. What the part of this is important to understand because this shows that they can be attractive, attracted to young people. It doesn't mean they have to carry out the action. It would be fascinating to find out the statistics of people that are paedophiles without committing a paedophilic crime that have never abused well, now I, I managed to find one video where this man admitted that he's got it and there's a name for it it's called a uh, virtuous paedophile where he admits that he's got this sexual attraction yeah. to young people that he can't control it's just like our sexual attraction to male or female depending on your sexuality yes. sexuality trait and he doesn't commit the crime because he knows it goes against culture so a virtuous 
paedophile. Yes. Can you believe that they put those two names together? And this this is where the unconscious mind will be filled with rage. Now, how what dare you, you call yourself? You how saying? can you even label yourself as virtuous? But guess what happened 60 years ago? We used to uh, abuse gay people for being their sexuality, didn't yes. we? We used to do the same thing that we do to paedophilia Absolutely, now. but the counter-argument to that is, but two adult males were consenting to that sexual act. Yes. In this situation, it's an adult abusing, taking control and power over somebody that's vulnerable that can't say no. But you see, if we can switch that perspective now to say, okay, there's a part, there's a brain injury, there's a brain, part of the brain hasn't formed where they understand what we understand, that it's wrong. Yes. It's a sexual desire that they can't stop, right? Because at the moment, we're thinking, hang them, castrate castrate them, and that does away with paedophilia. It doesn't, does it? No, it doesn't. So if we look at it, and I agree with it to a degree, ultimately when someone's, I mean, imagine now when you were 11, 12 years old and your uh, testosterone or estrogen was kicking in, you are starting puberty, and all of a sudden out of nowhere you get hit with sexual impulses that maybe weren't there before. If they were, they were deeply unconscious and not as impulsive as the hormones taking over now. So imagine you're at school and you look across the classroom and you look at a, a person of the opposite sex or the same sex, depending on what sexual orientation you are, and you feel that desire, that impulse, right? And you have these thoughts and fantasies. Now, no different has happened in the mind of someone that's classed as a paedophile. They've had a sexual orientation that they've not chosen. If you're homosexual now and you look at somebody of the same sex, you never chose to feel sexually driven or impulse to be with that person. It just happened within you. You didn't have any conscious control over it whatsoever and you never have been able to. So imagine now the paedophile has the same condition called being human as you are that feels impulsed to sleep with a child. At this moment in time, we can argue that that's not bad. What's bad is the point where they lose control of that, they're unconscious within that process, and they go out and act out that abuse. And I think this highlights the, the very thing that we can fix. Society at the moment makes it wrong, so nobody's brave enough to turn around at the age between 12 and 16 or even older and say, I have this sexual desire for a young person because they know what would normally happen. The consequences, yeah. Yeah. So it's a society problem, how we view, which we had with gay gay people years ago. It's it the is. same thing. You, and didn't, if, you didn't come out of the closet. No. And if we look at it, imagine now that you are that 13-year-old kid that's having sexual fantasies or thoughts or desires about your eight-year-old niece. Yeah. Right. Let's and, get really and, graphic and with it. And brothers and sisters. And brothers and sisters. So that person's got that and they've not chose to have it, just like you never chose to have your sexual orientation. Now... How frightening a world must it be for a kid to know that they've got those impulses and they know that the whole world wants to hang them for it. Now, imagine how stable your sense of psychology and sense of well-being becomes knowing that you have an orientation that the world, it's beyond hate. They want to kill you for the way you feel and what you're impulsed to do. And throw like, that into a normal unconscious world with family members and yes. you are going to grow up with uh, all these other side effects. Well, as, as Carl Jung would say, now it becomes part of your shadow. You now repress that part of yourself and become even more protective and secretive over it because you fear that the culture knowing what's going on with you means death in some way. So you keep it quiet. You become a s subtle hider and seeker of that condition that you've got. Now imagine if we, as Craig's saying, we change cultural perspective of it so there's more understanding there. And even, God forbid, a little bit of empathy that, my God, you'll look at it, you've got an adult sexual orientation that doesn't involve abusing a kid. Let's imagine that the culture now starts to see it as partly a normal part of the human race. It's there, it exists. So if we couldn't create environments or infrastructure that allowed people that go through those awful stages of puberty and have sexual orientation towards kids and actually see it as, you're not bad. You have got nothing wrong with you at the minute. All we want to try and do is let you understand that somebody could get abused as a result of it and you don't want that and they don't want that. So can we give you t tools and techniques and mechanisms and make you more conscious of yourself so that doesn't lead to abuse? Now, the outcome of that is, which is fascinating, let's say that we tried it with a million paedophiles and let's say that 975,000 of those paedophiles still went out and abused 
That's 30,000 paedophiles that you have just helped that are not abusers, which means that you've just literally helped 30,000 children not become a statistic. So it might not be the perfect invitation that me and Craig are offering, but statistically it means less suffering, less abuse. And a more conscious understanding world, doesn't it? Yeah, well, the important thing is to highlight this, this 50% of paedophiles, and the other 50% is uh, a lot more difficult, but again, it's society's problem. The To highlight this at an early age, that someone's comfortable enough to go to a clinic or a, a, even a GP understands yeah. that this is something where we can have a brain scan, we can highlight the brain injury, we can see that that part of the brain hasn't formed, and we know... He will sexually desire children throughout his life in the future. Yes, and when you when you describe it as uh, something wrong with the brain, let's let's flip it around and say that there's nothing wrong with the brain. Let's look at the. Have we got statistics that talk about how many abused children become paedophiles? Because I had a statistic that it's around about seventy five percent of all child abusers now were abused as children. Now, our answer to dealing with that is to kill them all or wipe them off the planet in some way or put them on an island and bomb it. What you're really doing is abuse. you're abusing the very people that were abused. You are now, with your unconsciousness, projecting out more hate and more destruction to the world. Now, people's counter-argument to that will be, well, fucking hell, what we're supposed to do with them? Hug them. What we're supposed to do with them? But... This is what's so annoying because I've watched these to do research for this podcast. I've seen some live uh, talk Facebook shows videos, and yeah. like, yeah, when they're talking about this subject and you'll have somebody who's the clever sort of uh, guest, uh, even like uh, a celebrity in their own right, a doctor or somebody. Yeah. And they will act like that unconsciously. No, I don't believe we should be calling them virtuous paedophiles. I don't believe this is true. We need to throw away the key with these people, right? Now, this unconsciousness that we've said causes mental health, causes these problems in life, this is, again, the human race being unconscious to what is really going on. Within themselves, isn't it? Completely yeah. unconscious but, of their yeah, own mechanics. And in, and in the external world as well. It's yes. like you're viewing this from the only intelligence that you've got and information that you've received from okay. your life. So let's play around with that controversial statement, virtuous paedophile. Let's imagine that all the people that really hate and they have an okayness to hate paedophiles. You can understand why. If someone abused my kids, I'd want to kill them. It's as simple mm. as that. But we're trying to step a little bit out of emotion here and see things a little bit more intellectually and, to, and consciously. And, and remember, our main game is to, to stop children from being abused. We're not saying this so paedophiles get a lesser sentence. We're yeah. saying this so children can get saved in the future. What's that, the answer now? That uh, a paedophile gets shot and somebody hopes that if we kill all the paedophiles, we'll rid the world of paedophilia. What we're seeing is is that people are still being born into the world with paedophilic tendencies, yeah. so you can't stop it that and, way. And this is the other 50% that we found. Now, 50% have this brain injury. Now, of course, 50% obviously means that they don't. Now, the other reasons that I found out, now, this is a reason from an actual NHS website. Yeah. This is uh, saying that one of the reasons can be desire, control, like a sexual tendency, but not because of the brain injury. It's just a, a sexual tendency to abuse. Right? Yes. Now, I thought about this, right? Isn't it funny that society allows a school uniform to be part of sexy laundry in an Ansomers shop, right? Now, just yeah. think of that one perspective for a minute. We allow that school, like a, an adult yes. woman, can dress up like a schoolgirl and men can find that attractive. However, yeah. we say that to be attractive to school girls is wrong. Yes. What's going on there? We're, we're There's actually, a complete like, blind spot in uh, awareness, isn't there? That's it. It's like yeah. uh, you're, one side you're saying, which I agree with, it's like how can you fancy anybody under the age of 16? Yeah. However, will you wear this dress for me in the fancy dress party tonight? Yeah. It's like what what's going on in society? Yeah. That's one point. The, um, the other one is just this fantasy factor. It's like a... A delusional fantasy. Now, I thought about this one as well. Where would a delusional fantasy to uh, abuse a child come from? Now, how many times have you watched a film where you have seen this? How much is it put on the news as a main headline, as a story? We're fed this all the time. Now, yeah. when you're a young child and you see a film and you have these thoughts that are not logical and rational like an adult, you would be delusional that that sort of horror that thriller 
is actually real. It exists yeah. in the world as a trait. Yeah. But obviously the, the most direct cause of paedophilia, if you look at this statistically, is the idea that most paedophiles were abused. They had some sort of dysfunctional relationship to their abuse. So, for instance, somebody that's seven years old and, and every child goes through a stage of neglect. In other words, people's parents are busy, which means we can't take care of the needs of the child. And let's be honest, we're massively needy. We need so much to build a strong sense of self-esteem. However, they go around to Uncle Bob's house, right? And Uncle Bob gives them all of this significance. He's basically grooming them now, Bobby's, isn't he? He's making them feel, he's filling those voids of neglect. And even more so, he's making the child feel very special. And this is in all circumstances, but if you listen to a lot of the paedophile stories, this is a common theme that runs out of it. That He made me feel special. He told me everything. And then he started to touch me, and I knew something was wrong, but I also learnt that uh, so I was getting some sort of care and attention that I wasn't getting somewhere else. Now, that child learns love to be a secretive thing because Uncle Bob tells them not to tell anyone. It's their secret. So they learn in that moment that those good, warm feelings... And again, not in all circumstances, lots of children have been abused and it hasn't been a warm, comfortable experience. But for these people that they learn love to be secretive, uh, comfortable and associated with a sense of uh, vulnerability, a lack of control. And what happens is they grow up with those symbols attached over these emotions, which regulate their sense of map of the world. So when they're around vulnerability and someone with a lack of control, and somebody that they have a tendency to want to take care of, which is probably their abused self wanting to come out and protect the thing that it saw as being abused and vulnerable as a kid, that begins to get mixed up in the sexuality. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you have a, a paedophile. Yeah, and this is a cracking point. This is like brilliant. This is spot on the money. We need to break this down a little bit further for people to understand what we're talking about. A paedophile has been abused and somehow in his young uh, state has mixed that up with a confusion with love it's, yes and we are looking at it as an adult state for our adult perspective as if that's got any more logic or rationale yeah. than the child has yeah and saying that this is just disgusting it's abusive they know that they're doing wrong in the mental mind frame of their actions there's a big root connection to a past part of you that felt some sort of uh, reward or love or some sort of yeah. significance, right? Now, if you think about this, you at home do this every day. You do exactly the same thing, not about the abuse of the children. This is just the way he reflects it out. But you are with a partner that could be uh, similar to your mother and dad in tendencies and humour and all these traits. And you are just by the law of nature drawn to these people and it's under it's, again it's important for society to understand what's taking place because you can have a different perspective on the paedophile then we can highlight the paedophile as somebody who has had his past life completely he's gone through basically a traumatic experience that he's now projecting out and he's now drawn to this darkness and let's look at this kid then so it's had a distorted understanding of reality through a, a shit version of love and it's attached all these symbols on right now we're talking about understanding and awareness and being conscious of what the processes are in the human body that could lead to that which in a sense enables you to reflect out of the world that you saw as horrific to somebody that hadn't abused children yet but just had the sexual orientation to do so. You now see them with a sense of empathy and compassion. Not the one that's gone out and abused, rightly so. They need to go to prison or do some sort of rehabilitation to prove that they can move on from it. But now you show a little bit of empathy and compassion towards them. So awareness, knowledge has That's led to a, set, a better sense of love. Now let's look at it. It was a distorted love that created the problem, the difficulty within the person that went out to become a paedophile. Now you have a chance with deep understanding to reflect back to them and understanding and compassion and love that they didn't ever have. And they could rewire and reshape their brain that now culture doesn't want to kill me. Culture wants to understand me. Culture wants to nurture me and help me get through this. I don't want to hurt anybody. I didn't want to get hurt when I was abused. So the outcome 
massively could cut down children being abused all over the planet. That's it. And, and if people are at home now still shocked and stuck in their emotion and thinking it's a load of bollocks, you are contributing to the abuse of kids by not really waking up to what's going on within the human mind and body. Well, this brings me to another good point. The, uh, the percentage of children, right, that apparently uh, suffer sexual abuse over the world, and I don't believe the statistic is true, it says 50% of children, right? Now, I would double that to say 15% of children don't know they're even being abused and haven't said it. You have people who are 50 and 60 and still have never told anyone that was abused yeah. because it's at the traumatic expense. Yes. Uh, and this 15% turns to 30%. And then I thought about another part of abuse that we do, the just unconscious abuse that we cause, not just sexual, but unconscious abuse that we're yeah. constantly having. So you're looking at 50%, I would say and argue, children are being unconsciously abused in all of their households over the world, right? That's half yeah. of the population of children, I would argue, yes. which means that an even larger part of adult life is also this unconscious behaviour. Yes. Now, what we're trying to say is, can you view this paedophile as if he's got mental health? Let's just take that one step first. Yeah. Can we see it as a mental health problem? Yes. If it's not the sickness, like disease. Yeah. A, a mental health problem. Because when we take that first step of viewing it like yeah. that, we are now becoming more conscious as an adult group. Yes. What this would do for me is to create the curative future that we want. We don't want children to ever be abused in any situation. And it is because of unconscious behavior that leads to this mental health. Yes. Our answer is teachers and adults when they're young can see these tendencies, not suppress them yes. like we were always told to do, suppress our feelings and suppress yes. what we see and take little Jimmy the age of 15 to a doctor who can look into a brain scan and, and see if this virtuous paedophile system, this brain disorder is there. And we can then put him on the medication, break him down through how it's not and it's wrong support culturally. And support him psychologically and emotionally through the process that little Jimmy's done absolutely fuck all wrong at the minute. Yeah. He's just got a sexual orientation which doesn't benefit society, doesn't benefit our children or himself. That's it. And 50% then of that paedophile problem is looked upon analyzed and we've got a system in place now the other 50 percent, how are we going to solve that well we solve it with the same way it's again a mental health problem all these things have happened through traumatic experiences and the way they've learnt about life and we analyze that now and we spot that at a young age as well we become more conscious that yeah. you know what you've had certain things happen to you in your life where you're likely, like, how many times does an abused child get the support to make sure that he doesn't go on in the future and abuse and somebody forget, else? Yeah. All the time. Yeah. All the time. So when we're looking at paedophilia now, hopefully you can get an idea that we're trying to get across that, of course, there's a line. Once somebody that's abused has crossed that line of abuse, of course, they need to be taken out of society. Now, we're not about killing them or whatever, but there needs to be something in place where they're taken out because obviously a lot of stories of people that have abused and they're allowed back straight out into the culture. And you can see why parents get really scared, as myself does, and there's a lot of anger that's built up. So you can see, you can sit with the parents 100%, us as parents, yeah. and say, we're no different. If, if something happened to one of our kids, I would want to kill the person that abused that's my it. kid. Or send them to space, like the clip or at the Or send start, them to space. You know but I mean? ultimately, we're trying to throw... And this is where it's difficult to people that don't believe in it. We're trying to put the facts in place, regardless of your emotion, which tells you a different story about paedophilia... And one that will lead to less children getting abused. So it's either wake up, wise up, get more aware and understand and, and limit as much abuse that goes on on the planet against children sexually. Or stay unconscious, stay angry, don't want to learn anything. And you have just contributed with your lack of wanting to understand. You are contributing towards children being abused. Yeah. Now that's a fucking statement that people will get shit angry about, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and good because you can you can consciously grow through that anger. Yeah. The unconscious behaviour, what we're trying to highlight is there's some more facts when I typed in sexual abuse stories and the research for this. It came up that recently, last month, that uh 
all the bank charges from the site Pornhub was stopped because there was videos being uploaded there of children being sexually abused, right? And lots of men, you would presume more men than females watching the porn, are downloading these images and having them pumped into their brains as if this is complete normality. And again, be consciously aware that we are causing this. We are doing this. We are allowing a site like Pornhub to be able to let anybody upload a sexual image, which is a subcategory of young teen, this young uh, phenomena that we've had, but it's a sexual desire. This is a conscious thing that we can stop. These things, these stories that we hear are things that we are causing. News just coming in. News just coming in. It's great news from over at NASA. Ground control. They've just reported the safe return of the boy. Uh, and also some more good news that the paedophile still is on his own in a capsule orbiting the Earth. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in.